All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Thursdays at Home. We're so excited to present this artist talk with Ju Young Shin. On behalf of the students, staff, and volunteers at the IU Eskenazi Museum of Art, thank you for joining us. My name is Keaton. My pronouns are he, him. I'm a museum host and a student studying arts management. We wish to acknowledge and honor the indigenous communities native to this region and recognize that Indiana University Bloomington was built on indigenous homelands and resources. We recognize the Miami, Delaware, Potawatomi, and Shawnee people as past, present, and future caretakers of this land. At this time, the IU Eskenazi Museum of Art would like to thank National Advisory Board members Greg and Judy Somerville and Linda Watson for their support of the museum's contemporary art efforts, which helps the museum host these types of events. We would also like to thank the East Asian Studies Center at Indiana University's Hamilton Luger School of International Studies for their generosity and support of this program. For those who are curious to ask questions, we invite you to submit questions by typing into the Q&A, which is located at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar. Questions will be addressed in the second por portion of our program this evening. Here are a few tips for optimizing your experience today. There are several ways to adjust the size of images on your screen. If you're connecting from a PC or laptop, at the top of your screen, look for View Options. Click on View Options to select settings that work best for you. The vertical bar between the slides and the speaker slides left and right to make sure the presentation slides are sized to your liking. For those connecting with a phone or an iPad, you may be able to enlarge images by pinching the screen. Live closed captioning is available for this program, and this can be turned on from your Zoom toolbar. This program is being recorded. For those who are interested in availability of recordings of Artist Talks, please subscribe to the museum's e-newsletter for updates or check the museum's official YouTube channel. Before release, recordings are sent for professional review of closed captioning for accessibility. We do appreciate your patience. For With me today are Elliot Reichert, Curator of Contemporary Art at the Eskenazi Museum of Art, Laura Shepper, Public Experiences Manager, and Jiyoung Shin. The Eskenazi Museum values students, and I have the great privilege of introducing the visiting artist. Ji Young Shin is an assistant professor of fashion design at Indiana University. She's explored diverse areas in the fashion field as a designer, fashion historian, researcher, and now educator. Design practice has been a fundamental component of her research program since the day she began her journey as a fashion design scholar. As a prolific designer, Dr. Shin participated in numerous peer-reviewed exhibitions and presented three solo exhibitions since 2008 to international and national audiences. She puts her own cultural heritage at the center of her creative work and her research interests focus on distinct cultural perceptions represented in fashion. Please welcome me in joining Ju Young Shin. Okay, hello. <laughs> I just unmute myself. Okay, um, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, Eskenazi Museum of Art and Elliot for giving me this opportunity to share uh, my creative uh, my creative research projects with a broad audience, and it is a privilege to be part of a visiting artist series this year. Okay, oops, sorry. Um, when I've been in the audience as you are tonight uh, seeing uh, my colleagues' outstanding presentations, um, uh, something inspired, something that inspired me uh, was um, seeing, uh, hearing them talk about their earliest work, the work that uh, illustrates uh, the passion um, for what they still do today. So I wanted to share my drawing, uh, my work that I did many, many, many years ago. Um, so I found this naive and unfinished drawing of a girl wearing glittering earrings, Korean traditional coronet, and a long hairpin um, on the, on the, drawn on the corner of the page of the Bible my mother received from her doctor after a few days after she gave birth to me. Um, so it is 
Uh, I don't really uh, precisely remember when I produced this work, but it is easy to um, visualize a probably six or seven year old girl um, drawing this um, well adorned figure with her tiny hands. I kind of want to say maybe I was four or five, but then wasn't sure that I was talented enough to produce work like this at four or five. So to be safe, I will say six or seven. Um, so uh, this drawing is uh, my first fashion illustration and uh, tangible proof of my lifelong uh, fascination with design and fashion. And as you can see, um, I must have been a, a girl with um, maximalist taste. I don't really um, like the maximalist um, designs these days, but I'm sure I was a girl with a maximalist taste back then. Okay. So I am now I'm going to show you uh, several images that illustrate East Asian and Western cultures developed um, a distinctive, sorry, distinct way of seeing and perceiving objects in our surroundings. When looking at dresses from East Asia and the West juxtaposed at museums or in prints, their formative differences, as you can see from these um, wedding costumes from uh, Korea and America and uh, um, England, you can see that three dimensionality of um, East Asian dress and three dimensionality of three, uh, the Western dress uh, is so evident that every layman would not question this assumption that there must have been uh, a disparity in the construction of uh, clothing worn by the East Asian, uh, East Asians and Westerners in the past. And also in a uh, portrayal of the human body, Western artist uh, features distinct anatomy um, and sexual polarity prominently. They also endeavor to capture and document the ideal body shape of their day. We, uh, we should note that um, they often, the artists often intentionally ignored anatomical accuracy to represent that the perfect beauty of the time. Natural body proportions was distorted or exaggerated for this specific purpose. The East Asian artists, unlike their Western counterparts, did not share the same goal. They avoided accurate physical representation of the body. In other words, they seldom celebrated the articulated body and the sexual polarity uh, was less distinctive in Eastern Asian art. As seen in these two paintings, one is from Korea, the other is from um, Japan, the painters drew uh, female bodies with few brush lines and um, made no attempt to represent the surface of uh, skin, the surface texture of skin or muscle hidden under the flesh. Female sexual characteristics were uh, indicated simply by the presence of uh, breasts. Now we are looking at the two medical illustrations. Undoubtedly, the language used to describe uh, diseases and their cures uh, was understood and spoken differently in uh, by sorry differently by the medical practitioners um, of each culture. Despite East Asian and Western medicines sharing a common aim in terms of um, philosophy and healing practices, from the standpoint of Eastern. Uh, symbolism, the body was a um, quote, complex network of energized matter, unquote. Uh, it's called qi, qi, and gi in China, Japan, and Korea, respectively. In contrast, the body in the Western medical practice was dissected into, into multiple parts, layers, and structures, and uh, articulated by clear distinction according to the positions and uh, functions. So from my experience of living in various cultures, I was uh, born and raised in Seoul, Korea and uh, moved to the United States to study fashion design as an adult. Um, so I was in Providence, Rhode Island and New York and went back to Korea and I got my PhD and started my teaching career there. And then uh, several years later, I moved to um, Hong Kong um, and then Ithaca, New York so I returned um, some, um, in 2016, and then here I am. I landed in Bloomington, Indiana, which I want to call my second home. Um, 
So I became curious, like from my, my nomadic life, I became curious why people from different times and places exhibit different aesthetic values and how such disparity influenced the construction of the dress in terms of form and meaning. So this uh, fundamental question defined my research trajectory and one research topic led to another by stretching my research scope. Um, as Keaton mentioned, my research, my creative research interests uh, are focused mainly on fashion and aesthetics and fashion history and the different cultural perceptions represented through fashion. So to develop my work beyond the point at uh, which my designs are a mere expression of my creativity and ensure that my design research follows a traditional research path, I focus on visual interpretation of the theories. In other words, I integrate uh, theories uh, from various fields to develop a theme or concept for my creative work. So my second solo exhibition, Five Phases, Endless Cycle of Creation and Destruction, was the first creative outcome developed from the study of the dress body relationship in East Asia and West, uh, with more emphasis on my cultural heritage. For a theoretical foundation of this creative project, I uh, chose a five phases theory, one of the ancient underlying philosophies of East Asian culture that encompasses almost every aspect and phenomena of human life. For example, essential elements, virtues, cardinal points, colors, shapes, um, season, climate, fruit, grains, and even religion. I developed design principles to visually represent the theoretical findings of the dress body relationship and five phase theory from which um, design elements were mainly taken. Five colors, blue, white, red, black, and yellow that uh, correspond to the five elements and five cardinal points, east, west, uh, south, north, and center, and four heavenly creatures, dragon, tiger, phoenix, and tortoise guarding the four points. There is a heavenly creature that guards the center, but I intentionally did not use it as a motif. Instead, I used a four, uh, the four creatures as the guardians of the center. Um, the mural paintings, as you can see on, uh, in this slide, um, the mural paintings of the complex of the Goguryeo tombs fascinated me when I saw them and I transferred them onto um, the various surfaces of the work by digital printing. Goguryeo is uh, one of the three ancient kingdoms of Korea, along with the Baekje and Shilla. And I selected the Korean traditional uh, dress hanbok as a source of inspiration for its unique combinations of line and shape. Um, so when I have um, kind of concrete idea or concept for the creative work, the next step I strive to develop the innovative design principles. So the first design principle I developed is achieving harmony by uh, producing a complementary relationship between contrary elements. Asymmetry is introduced within the symmetry or vice versa. Three-dimensional body framing and two-dimensional body defined silhouettes are merged into one, uh, sorry, merged in one garment. I also try to represent a dynamic generated from the interaction between creation and destruction. From these relationships stems the idea that nothing can be uh, created without destruction and nothing can be entirely, I mean, destroyed, sorry, entirely without creation. For example, wood generates uh, fire and fire creates earth, whereas metal destructs wood and water puts out fire. I intentionally destroy symmetrical balance to create asymmetry. Excuse me. Irregular shaped uh, holes and gathers serve as a device that break the boundary between the body, dress, and surrounding and the surrounding space. Crossing and overlapping elements are employed to highlight the endless cycle of elements as well as uh, ambiguous boundaries between them. The works in this slide represent blue, um, east dragon. I use a Photoshop to change the original colors of the mural painting to blue. 
So I'm going to show more uh, um, of my work created for this collection. So this is White and um, Tiger West. One of the unexpected challenges I encountered was um, digital printing with the various types of white fabrics. As you can see, I ended up having um, pale pinkish mash fabric and then yellow, greenish yellow uh, linen, even though I used the same file to do the printing. So I was uh, sad and then disappointed, but it, I went ahead and then just used these co different color. They're supposed to be white. Um, as you can see, there are crossings and overlapping used for uh, this bodice or top and match with the jumpsuit, strapless jumpsuit. And I made the, I love creating asymmetry within symmetrical balance. So sometimes a subtle, sometimes very obvious. And this one, I would say, I mean, when you look at the top, there are asymmetrical design, but I, I don't know, I just found asymmetrical design um, more aesthetically pleasing. It's my personal thing, I believe. Okay. And this is yellow for creatures and center. So in Eastern, uh, East Asian culture, especially in Chinese culture, yellow is the uh, symbolic color of the center. So um, yellow was reserved only for the emperor and empresses in, uh, in China. Um, here, oh, and also I used, um, I used a Korean traditional handbook sleeve. So I made them, uh, several sleeves in different sizes or different length and had a digital print uh, on the on each sleeve and then layer them to create the skirt. Uh, and you can see these irregular shaped holes that kind of breaks a boundary or obscures a boundary between body and the dress and uh, the surrounding spaces. This is Red Phoenix South. And this is a black tortoise north. Um, throughout this creative project, I attempted not only to develop the way in which the Eastern perspective of the body and dress can be interlaced with modern fashion design elements, but also to present an opportunity for the viewers to witness how an ancient underlying philosophy of the Eastern culture can be embodied in the form of creative fashion art. And several years later, I embarked on another project to find the answer to the question of why people from different cultures, more, uh, more specifically East Asia and West, constructed clothes in a distinct uh, style. To build a theoretical foundation for my design research, I conducted an extensive research on how the body was perceived and uh, portrayed in philosophy, art, and medicine in East Asia uh, and the West and argued that different perspectives toward the body existed in uh, each culture. I examined how they affected the establishment of a distinctive dress body relationship in these two cultures. Undoubtedly, different perceptions of the body in East Asia and the West influenced the develop development of a distinct dress body relationship in each culture and eventually established a distinctive dress style. In conclusion, each culture constructed a complex and ambivalent dress body relationship that cannot be defined um, in a range of absolute or uh, and singular context, reasoning that the body and dress respectively embodied in a particular view of the social and cultural situations in which each was situated. So my creative uh, work consisting of 12 designs was exhibited at the Jill Street Gallery at Cornell University in November 2017 and the Fashion Gallery at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University in August 2018. The theoretical findings of the origin of distinct East Asian and Western dress body relationship provided several concepts and ideas. For example, oneness duality, uh, in independent and interdependent relationship, uh, ambiguous and dis or distinctive boundaries between dress and body perceived and uh, or versus articulated body. And they became uh, the inspiration of my creative work uh, titled Dress and Body Oneness or Duality. Um, so oneness is 
my, uh, it's the very first design I created for this project. It consists of strapless one-legged jumpsuit and skirt. The main goal was to achieve a symmetrical balance by juxtaposing antithetical design elements in one garment. These dichotomies include 3D versus 2D, fixed versus transformable, revealing versus uh, concealing, etc. I used the continuous horizontal uh, strips that wrap around the body to represent the interaction between contrary elements, for example, light darkness, earth sky, body mind, and male, female, uh, et cetera, and, the, and their connection within the universe. I chose black and white for um, the main colors because they reflect the harmonious uh, union of yin yang symbols uh, and simultaneously contradiction. To emphasize each design's formative uniqueness, I uh, did not introduce the elements of color uh, and surface motifs uh, purposefully. For this collection, I employed the 3D printing technology. This was the first time I'm I used the um, cutting edge technology um, to achieve the transformability that allows flexibility for the contour of the garment to be manipulated um, into body fitting or flat modes that floats away from the body after assembly. So I created um, 3D printed hexagons and triangles with varying numbers of hinges. Um, they were joined together to form various part of the garments with 3D printed pins. I designed the 3D printed triangles with four small holes, as you can see right there, uh, on one side for the purpose of joining. I introduced, uh, I introduced transformability by allowing the garment's silhouette, uh, silhouette shapes and sizes to be adjust adjusted throughout the collection. Um, Metamorphosis um, is my favorite design from this collection. The first and foremost design principle of a metamorphosis was to represent the visual dynamics of deconstructing the fixed boundaries between dress and body. I introduced an ambiguous boundary between dress and body by allowing a continuous transformation between three-dimensional body uh, conforming and two-dimensional body defying silhouettes of the garment. I employ the sustainable design practice whenever possible. I minimize fabric waste by using the full width of fabric uh, and no waste cutting of fabric. Fabrics were cut in squares and shaped to fit the body through uh, gathering and um, or pleating or both. For example, the overlayer of, um, sorry, the overlayer made of wool tweed of this uh, garment uh, has intrinsic fringed edges because of the weaving technique and the unique selection of yarns. I found it's really, really gorgeous and I didn't want to cut it or waste it. So to utilize it as a design element, I um, cut the fabric to the desired length and draped it over the body. So I think I can say definitely less um, waste was produced from this collection. The design of the dichotomy captures the visual dynamics uh, and for, uh, formative balance created by a marriage of antithetical design elements in one garment. Rather than giving the impression that the large rectangular shape concealing half of the body outweighed the, the other side, which was much smaller in scale and more body revealing, the imbalance was subdued by manipulating the visual weight. The overdress transforms into various shapes and sizes by adjusting the volume of gathers uh, with a drawstring inserted on the top edge. White and black mesh fabrics were cut and layered, cut in squares and layered using their full width. This tasseled um, drawing, a uh, drawstring is called sejode, a waist cord more commonly worn with um, traditional Korean men's coat. Um, and um, at a, glim at a glimpse, um, a little morph consisting of a strapless dress and vest appears to be in perfect symmetry. 
Uh, still, there are several innovative design elements that create a subtle asymmetry within this design. First, each side panel made of um, panel of the vest made of 3D printed pieces was um, assembled in a different configuration. Therefore, they can be um, manipulated into different silhouettes. Secondly, there are uh, vertical slits uh, in different length uh, dispersed from top to hem along the skirt seam lines intentionally placed to create asymmetry. Parts of the tool underskirt can be pulled through these slits to create interest and contrast in textures. Uh, lastly, five set of ties sewn inside the skirt at the waist and, uh, and various levels from top to hem, allowing the designer and wearer uh, to give a myriad of silhouette options. The length can be adjusted as well as the shape and size of the silhouette. I mean, the, the bubble part can be shortened and longer. Right now I had it the front shorter than the back, but you can have like same length um, or you don't, oh, you need to have the bubble, sorry, because it, the skirt is really long. Um, and the length can be adjusted. Oh, sorry, I said that, sorry, the title. Oh, a little morph uh, represents how a pair or series of uh, alternatives or reciprocal design elements can be juxtaposed within a single garment and produce a hybrid form. The skirt was made of five long and narrow panels of Korean Raimi. Uh, it was, um, each panel was 59 inches long and 13 inches wide. Um, to utilize the fabric panels without producing any waste, I uh, overlapped each panel's edges from uh, central uh, panel outward and topstitched two layers uh, with an, a quarter inch overlap seam. Through the design of counterpoise, I aim to demonstrate innovative ways in which uh, two-dimensional body defined shapes reveal and suggest three-dimensional body silhouettes. And an ambiguous boundary between dress and the body was introduced in the form of transformability. Again, the top made of two long rectangles can transform into diverse shapes and sizes by adjusting the, the volume of the gathers uh, with a drawstring inserted on the top edge. It's a sheer and uh, amorphous character created this um, obscurity within the body and dress relationship. In contrast, the pants, uh, inspired by the traditional Korean women's uh, underwear, were constructed with various shapes resulting in a fixed and non-transformable uh, form. Its wide waistband made of white ramy strips introduced an asymmetrical element that subtly disrupt the symmetry of this design. The semi-transparency -transpar of the pants serve two purposes. It blurred the boundaries between the body and dress and simultaneously revealed the three-dimensional body uh, encaged in two-dimensional form. Also, I combined various materials, um, mesh neoprene, mesh, tulle, and Korean traditional ramy and silk to achieve unique textures. The design of perfect imperfection shows how to achieve formative balance and visual harmony between opposing design elements. The dichotomies included two-dimensional body-defying shapes and three dimensional body molding shapes, soft and smooth surface versus coarse and tactile texture, and of course, black versus white. I study a particular type of uh, Korean tra traditional woman's underwear again, and deconstructed and modified it. The lower part of the jumpsuit consists of three pieces, two layered side panels, you can see black and uh, the white fabrics layered together, gathered at the waist and sewn to the bodice with open inseams. Uh, in other words, these panels loosely hanging from the waist and the center triangular piece of uh, wool tweed um, that joins front to back. This wool piece serves to keep the loosely hanging panels in place as well as to pr uh, provide the wearer a uh, sense of modesty <laughs> um, because there's a, like the, the central part is completely open. Um, so I had to tack it a little bit, uh, but it's all separated pieces. They're not really sewn. Um, okay. Oh, sorry. 
the next one. Um, for Rhapsodic Serenity, I overlapped and repeated various design elements, uh, shapes, lines, and textures to create a visual balance uh, between antagonistic dichotomies. Multiple parts of the dress exhibiting symmetry. Um, overall dress silhouette consisted of strapless bodice and pleated skirt and asymmetry, a bodice made of strips overlapped with, uh, with two looped panels of white Raimi were strategically assembled to achieve a balance. Besides each garment part was made of various materials, different type of, types of Korean traditional silks and Raimi, mash and tool. Along with the various antithetical shapes, uh, this combination of materials offered the viewer a visual trail uh, following the different shapes and textures. I highlighted a disruption within the harmonious balance by creating multiple diagonal lines through overlapping two-dimensional uh, two rectangles and uh, repetition of the continuous strips. The headpiece inspired by a Korean um, traditional monk's dance hat was made of four layers of uh, squares cut in different sizes and materials. The entire headpiece uh, comprises four complete layers joined at the apex of each layer. Again, employing overlapping and repetition of simple shapes. Initially, I created 3D printed uh, part that looks like a short vest um, or backless vest um, to be worn with this uh, design. And I am going to show four more designs I created for this collection. And so you have seen that I have employed three um, design principles that I developed for this collection to realize the profoundly distinctive and complex dress body relationship established in East Asia and um, Western culture. Okay, um, Alterity is a new it's a new creative journey on which I embarked on and I'm very excited about this project and it will be my fourth solo exhibition. Um, this project aims to uh, explore the social meaning of women and the construct of women's bodies in Eastern and Western civilization throughout history and to visually represent the concepts that a woman and her body embody. Uh, some concepts are very ambivalent. For example, uh, life, birth versus death, salvation versus damnation, earth versus sea, and some very paradoxical. Um, a woman is a gen regenerator, but not a creator. At the inception of this project, I chose the second sex written by Simone de Beauvoir as uh, a theoretical and philosophical uh, inspiration. Based upon her extensive research and her own experience as a female living in the early 20th century, Beauvoir tried to describe the fact of being a woman in the history of humanity uh, from the female point of view. She also argued that the entire history of a woman was written by men who defined themselves as one while setting up woman as the other uh, in opposition to themselves a hierarchy of the sexes established by men defined women to be subordinate to men, um, possessed and exploited by men. In almost every religious and patriarchal, patriarchal context, women and their bodies were described as innately weak, passive, inferior, and incompetent, and worst of all, completely absent because women had never been portrayed with authority and autonomy. A century later, however, I saw, I see many signs of women's empowerment in society. Women empower themselves. Um, witnessing the historic moments of women's empowerment, like the first female vice president of the United States taking the oath um, of office, I felt compelled to conjure a visual response to the question, what is a woman? Beauvoir asked uh, uh, almost a hundred years ago. So Last Source, Last Source and Unbound are my two designs created and show, showcased at the virtual conference as the preliminary outcome of this project in November, 2020. Through the design of Last Source, 
I wanted to represent a woman as a source of life and death and her body as a passage through the endless interaction between life and death. The life-death dichotomy was achieved by various design principles. Red and black were chosen as the main colors to reflect the various symbolic meanings in this design, blood, life, and death. The textual contrast emphasized the dichotomy. The combination, the combination of fixed forms and free shapes heightened the ambivalent feeling of the coexistence of life and death within a woman's body. The dynamics generated from the life-death interactions were represented with the linear elements carefully planned, symbolizing the path all humans takes, sorry, all humans take to the end of their life. And the irregular drapery created with no planning, no pre-planning or rules symbolizing the vicissitude of life. This garment is made of literally made of two pieces of rectangles. Um, unbound represent the symbolization of the female body and feminine sexuality. What has been uh, an erotic object of men's sexual, sexual desire and a symbol of phys physical psychological entrapment has been reimagined from a woman's perspective. I explored various shapes and silhouettes to emphasize the sensual beauty and symbolize the limited physical and psychological space allowed for women, such as the, uh, the wide cross overlapped, um, the black bands resembling the 18th century hoop skirt panier around the hip or horizontal bands in various shapes to represent the social con um, confinement that paralyzed a woman's body and her sexuality. In this design, red symbolizes lust, erotic, love, sexual desire, and black, a feeling of entrapment and suppression of women's um, desire. I envision that my work will present the audience with a visual history of how women were defined as the other and how they have overcome through endurance and struggle, leaving viewers to ask themselves if they have been part of the othering or part of the empowerment. This is the selected bibliography. And this is my uh, last slide. And I tried to find the perfect image to end my uh, presentation. And I found this one, um, very happy me with my two designs. And the reason I was very happy that day is that this was um, the new plus next, the exhibition was the first one that I participated as the uh, as a member of Eskenazi community. So I was very happy to be part of it. So um, my designs build on an underlying principle that has guided my cre creative work throughout my career, creating harmony by juxtaposing different um, concepts, different times or different places. My work shows how I built a theoretical foundation for design research as a fundamental part of uh, the process and produce a three-dimensional tangible artifact that is the embodiment of theory, inspiration, and practice of making, illustrating the multiplicity and complexity of creative scholarship. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'll be happy to take any question you have. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Um, thank you so much, Ji Young. That was really incredible in, in so many ways. Um, the, the materials you shared, um, your creative process, the intellectual background to your research, uh, really incredible. It's, it's rare that we get a um, bibliography from a speaker. <laughs> so I, no, I appreciate it because, you know, it, it's really, it, it, it speaks to the, the level of engagement of your scholarship, yeah. which I think is something that um, people who are not um, maybe as engaged in the, the practice of fashion, you know, might not understand that research aspect. And I, I'm, I'm monitoring a bunch of questions on the sidebar there, but I, I want to ask personally, um, you presented us with such a really erudite and really complex and really thoughtful um, uh, background to your work. And I wonder um, how do you understand either popular culture 
in your work or or a kind of popular fashion? Do you have influences that are um, exterior or you you know are you much more of a researcher in the work that you do? Um, Which is to say what are your influences, I guess is maybe yeah, the, the, the short. Yeah. Yeah, good question. Um, I think I would say I like to say both, but I think my inspiration, well, what influenced me as a design scholar or fashion design scholar, I want to say it's my identity and my culture and my life. So when I was preparing um, presentations, um, I look back my life and then, and then what is happening these days, pandemic, all this, um, the anti-Asian racism and hate, it just, um, I looked back my life and then I became more appreciating um, my life that I was able to experience different cultures. So like I talk about my fundamental research question, I always curious why people see things differently. So um, I think that question, I, I think it kind of built uh, over the time that I, because of my identity as a Korean living in America. Um, so it's, I like to kind of explore why we as a humans have a different ideas, different perception toward many things, many objects in, um, in our surroundings. But I started with clothes, fashion, because that's where my interest is. Okay. More than fair, yeah. Um, I'll hand it off to Keaton um, if they want to um, monitor some Q and A. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I've got lots to ask. So. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you both so much. Um, your work is remarkable. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, we have many questions, as as you might expect. Um, so I'll get right into it. Um, how does your work and your interest in design and fashion influence your personal style? Ooh, wow. That's a good question. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it should be the other way around. Like my style influenced my <laughs> design. Um, but I showed you that my early work, I had this maximalist taste that putting all possible, like, all possible like accessories that I can I could think of as a seven or six seven year old girl I don't do that anymore um, so I think or maybe I should say you know we kind of like my work is inspires my style and my style inspires my work so um, probably most of you were able to see that I like black and white and I like minimal styles. And like I mentioned, I like everything asymmetry. I don't know, that makes me like more excited when I see something asymmetry, when I see completely symmetrical thing, I kind of lose interest. So right now I'm wearing um, Korean traditional, not really traditional one, it's modernized uh, hanbok. I'm not a big fan of it, but my mom bought it and then gave it to me. So right now it looks like very much like an asymmetrical design, but I couldn't really show you. But at the bottom part, maybe I should stand. Can you guys see it? There's a little, the pin tugs, horizontal pin tugs. So kind of breaks, subtly breaks the symmetry of the design. So um, yes, um, okay, back to the question. I think we, my work, my style, just influence each other. Elliot, thank you so much. Um, we've got a couple more. Let's see. Um, a lot of your designs focused on feminist or female uh, lenses. And Caroline Marr is wondering uh, what people or personal experience may have shaped this focus. Hmm. OK, thank you for a really good question, Caroline. Um, Actually, me being woman, I think I'm interested about women and what we think, how we see the world and how we make our ways in, in various different fields for their own careers. So I 
I don't really know, but I think from the beginning, when I started fashion design, I wanted to make women's clothing. Um, and when I studied fashion histories, again, maybe there are more information or more resources about women's fashion. So I was fascinated by uh, the history, fashion history. So I started learning Western fashion history. And then I started studying a little bit about my own um, the Korean traditional costumes. And again, I became very interested why Asian people um, used to wear very two-dimensional garments. Like the one I'm wearing, even though it's a modernized one, when I take, take it off and place it on the table, it's like a flat like a paper, a sheet of paper. And then when you look at the um, Western clothing with a dart, so it's kind of created to mold the body. So um, it's, oh, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> sorry. Um, just what experiences or, or people, oh. um, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think it just every day I experience my experience based on my life as a woman. So, and then recently, like I said, you know, what is happening in this world and today, I began to think about how I can uh, express um, about women and want to create some um, based on, create my design based on my perspective of women based on the theories or I'll do study research on um, how women were perceived in two different cultures, but I want, I'm want i hoping to find there's a common um, things and then different uh, um, like perspective toward women in, in each culture. So I think I will say everyday experience, my daily experiences brought me where I am now. I'll, um, I'll follow up with that. Um, and I'll try to synthesize a few questions and also a question that I also had myself in your presentation. Um, there's a lot of questions about materials, mm -hmm. where you source your materials, how do you think about materials? Okay. And then I think on top of that is um, you mentioned certain cuts and bolts of cloth being whole cuts and being thoughtful about uh, use and waste of materials. So how do you think about that? How much does that influence you? Okay, um, so the Korean fabrics, whenever I go home, um, I buy fabrics from the Korean traditional um, fabric stores. The re reason I love to use those fabrics because of the weaving technique, most of the fabrics produced for traditional uh, costume or traditional dress hanbok, they were very narrow. Like I think the widest was like 22 or 26. The Raimi fabric I love because of the texture. I love Raimi and then usually it comes in 13 or 12 inch wide. Then when I look at the fabric and then has a clean selvages, right? Clean finished edges. And I was like, hmm, maybe that can be the lazy thought. I was like, you know what? If I use these selvages, I don't have to do the finishings. What a great idea. So that's how I started. So when I design, I try to design something um, the shape that I don't have to cut or produce less waste. And also that kind of um, what's perfect because I wanted to create the garment in two dimensional uh, uh, shapes, like it's very flat. So I cut it like a square and um, start draping on my dummy. So I, as a designer, I like draping um, more than drafting. I think I like seeing everything in kind of three dimensionality, even though I really um, appreciate this beauty of uh, two dimensional, like two dimensionality of the garments, uh, the Eastern garments. Um, so yes, uh, I source fabrics from uh, Korea and mostly moods in New York. Sometimes I go to Joanne uh, and okay, Elia, what was the second question about Oh, no, I thought that was, that's actually quite great. I, I was wondering okay. about material sources. And then you've already addressed it that you basically are looking at entire bolts of cloth with the selvage yeah. and addressing it uh, as a whole. So. 
Yeah. Uh, I thought that that's excellent. Thank you so much. And I know Keaton's got some more um, from the audience. So. Yeah, we've got a, a very, very curious audience today. Um, so you touched on it a little bit um, that you like to work in three, three dimensions. Um, is there a specific way you like your art to be displayed? Is it more of an art piece or um, are they meant to be worn really? Um, well, I think I make all the garments wearable. Um, so they are not made to be just for display. So some of the garment, I don't know if you can um, remember the, I think that was the perfect imperfection, the strapless dress. Um, so I had my, my former student uh, wear uh, the dress for the special occasion and she looked great even though like, and then she had a no concern about, you know, those panels hanging loosely. Um, so yes, if anyone willing to wear my um, designs, I'm happy to kind of let them wear it. I love to see my garments on human than uh, on the mannequins. And there's a one thing I want to say, my garments are pretty much very small sizes because I start with my dummy and that's a smaller size. That's why it's, it may, may appear that I, it's not really, I'm not really including um, or it, my works are not really diverse in terms of sizes, but I was more like kind of making them for the exhibition. But there are some garments um, made with elastic uh, bands or something. So um, yeah, I can't say wide range of sizes, but um, people with the different sizes could wear my garments. Yes, they are all wearable. They have a fastenings and they will stay on the body. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, thank you so much again. This is so fun. <laughs> um, so what techniques and themes do you try to impart uh, to your students um, just during your classes? Okay, um, so that's a good question. Um, and also I had a like one kind of some advice to the students, not just to my students. I think when you want to become a, a successful designer, I think we need to value the basics, like basic hands-on technique. Even though we have a much more advanced technology or techniques these days, but I think there's a skill, um, not just the beauty of the hands-on technique. So I want my students to value the, these basic fundamental technology skills and mastering those skills is essential for them to be able to execute their design ideas successfully. Um, and so that's the one thing I always like to stress to my students. Uh, and I always use Alex, the late Alexander McQueen as a perfect example, uh, whose innovative, like innovative designs stemmed from his mastery of garment construction technique because he uh, did apprenticeship when he was a 16 at the several row um, in, in London. So he learned how to, how to do the, I mean, tailoring technique. And then he was able to kind of utilize his knowledge and skill to create those gorgeous, beautiful designs. And, um, and also I want to encourage my student to observe everything they see uh, hear and learn, uh, learn. Um, regardless of maybe the immediate relevance to their study. So, and then I want them to kind of build their own in, uh, own intellectual asset. So I don't know, maybe I'm a different generation and but in my opinion, having all the images in the Pinterest is, is not the, I don't know, um, I shouldn't maybe, I shouldn't say it, but I don't know. It, it's a good way to collect the images and the visual references. But sometimes I worry that students just deposit everything in one spot and then not knowing the original like sources of those images or like credibility of these images. Um, so I, I really, I am an advocate of knowledge is power. So, and I also recommend students to um, students 
do um, research before they start developing their concept for fashion design. So I value research based on creative re research based creativity. So I encourage a student to do research, collect as much information as possible, and then they can start. They have they are they will be armed with all these informations to begin with. So um, and another thing I want to say is that don't be afraid of making mistakes. I think we human tend to learn a lot more from making mistakes than our success because we need to go back and figure out what went wrong or how I did it wrong. Um, sometimes when you have this successful piece, you don't really look back, you just enjoy that, okay, I did great. <laughs> so, and another thing, I want my student to stay out of their comfort zone. Um, first design sketches, when I see from my students, there are usually kind of something that they, something they feel familiar with or comfortable. So I want them to kind of challenge themselves and like I said, make mistakes. But then what's important is um, their willingness to make it right. Ooh, that's one of my favorite songs of BTS. Make it right. <laughs> <laughs> that's my turn. Uh yeah. I'll, I'll jump in for a moment. And um, Linda Watson has a question because you, you've really drawn important lines about um, your focus on Eastern fashion culture. Um, and here you are working in a sort of Western environment. Mm -hmm. Do you find that those worlds are converging in, in fashion or are there important distinctions that you would still make? Um. That's, that's a really great question. Um, let me think. I think for me, um, when I design, as you saw it, it's all kind of emerged. Like, and then I try to find the beauty from each culture. And I want to appreciate the difference and respect the difference. And um, my work is kind of the, like I said, embodiment of these two differences. I like creating harmony by putting two different things together. And I think that's what I do. And it's maybe it's because I am living in the United States, like in the Western society or culture, but um, with my cultural heritage, my roots in Eastern culture. So I think that's what fascinated me and made me curious about um, those differences. And I want to use those differences and respect the differences and um, create something like something that combines these two. Did I answer the question? Yeah, that sounded great. Um, so we have a question from Julia Conley. Uh, she says, in my Native American culture, black and white clothing has a significance. Do you use it for a specific reason? Oh, could you repeat that question again? Sorry. Sorry. Um, no. Oh, sorry. Um, in my Native American culture, black and white clothing has a significance. Do you use it for a specific reason? Oh, so I think it, it, for this collection, um, I use it black and white because of the you know harmony um, this the symbolic meaning of harmony between um, antithetical um, object or like a black and white is a symbol of uh, harmony. Um, and personally, I like black. I love black clothes and I love everything black. And then I feel like, okay, maybe too many black. Then I want to add white. So, um, but I... Yes, I always start with a black in black. Uh, black always has been a part of my design work. Um, and also I love black because, or these colors that I choose to use usually carry various uh, symbolic meanings. So I can find uh, the right like um, representation uh, from different colors. And um, so I don't know, maybe it happened to be like black and white and 
like the the five colors so you know in in eastern culture black and white as a the basic colors that represent or correspond to the basic elements so um and my current one i again using black and red maybe that's the personal preference then i start finding dig more information to kind of justify why i use black and red um so it yes um i but i want to say i when i choose a color for my uh creative work i choose because they represent my concept. Then it happened to be black and white of all times. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much again. Um, I'm sorry we couldn't get to everybody's questions, but we are at eight o'clock. So thank you all so much for coming. Um, we appreciate everyone who's joined us for any of the seven visiting artist series programs that we've presented this year. Um, for those of you who might have missed some of the talks, we invite you to check YouTube for availability of past talks as we've begun to share talks on that platform. Highly encourage you look at all of all of their wonderful guests. Um, upcoming, we invite you to join us as Kelly Gallett Richardson introduces Art of the Character, highlights from the Glenn Close costume collection with a virtual talk on the exhibition's opening day, May 6th at 7 p.m. Information about this exhibition and more upcoming programs are available on our website. Today's program and everything we do here at the Indiana University Eskenazi Museum of Art is made possible by philanthropy. We would like to especially thank our supporters of the museum's annual fund, which allows us to continue providing these free programs to you all. So if you've enjoyed this event, please visit our museum's website to make a donation. Gifts big and small make all the difference. Finally, how was your experience today? We appreciate your feedback to help make better experiences. You can tell us in an easy survey as you exit the webinar. Now from all of us at the Eskenazi Museum of Art, take care and have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. you, Julian. Thank, Thank you, really you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have a so great fun. evening, everyone. Thank you, Kitten. Bye. Bye.